Well, let's get right back into this exciting series coming up between Space Station Gaming and August. Don't forget, Space Station are one zero up, not just in rounds, but in maps as well. Remember, it's the best of three. So if they close out this, that's their ticket straight to Invitational. The loser gets nothing. Attackers need to Good locate day, sir. Get as many bombs as they can. I really like how you emphasize the nothing. Nothing at all. And that's just got to be devastating. And that's, you know, if you're in a tournament and it's, there's a prize pool and you're in the final, you're thinking, okay, we want to win, obviously, but if we come second, we still get money. If you come second here, nothing. If you're not, if you're not first, you last, basically. So, we're going to see our round number two is getting underway. And uh, we will see the Valkyrie coming out, but we will see the IQ coming out. No echo, though. Coming out from Space Station, surprisingly, yeah, Redeemer. Yeah, He'll be playing on the Pulse instead here. What do you think about that? Well, we were almost bang on in what we were suggesting, weren't we? I kind of hinted toward the Valk. And you were pretty keen on the IQ, so the Pulse has got a lot of value playing downstairs, um, and I'm sure that SSG have got a pretty good plan as to how they're going to, you know, enable him to be able to play down there. The, you know, Smoke's probably making some holes in the floor that are going to be used to stem any pushes that are going to be coming from. Um, oh, that Valkyrie camera's going to get spotted pretty much straight away by Yeti, the uh, the nice one in the lampshade there in Small Tower. So, unfortunately for Bosco, he's going to lose one pretty much straight away. But he's still got one on site, which is going to enable them to uh, use a C4 and deny the plant thinking need. They're going to be making some holes pretty much all over the site in kids and in main dorms, just to be able to see where the push is coming from. Redeemer playing upstairs at the minute as, uh, as the pulse. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't necessarily disagree with this because I'm, I'm going to assume they have Kid's Dorm hatch open and that he can rotate Attackers down there in a the second. I know he has other ways that he can rotate Attackers down there as well. But I think that he, Device even if he doesn't down. rotate down, he still has a good position to deny the plant. He does have a nitro. You don't have to toss the nitro from below just because you have holes. So, yeah, there's still viable ways for him to do this. And just playing next to a hard wall could be really good. This is very interesting from Bosco. Bosco's got himself into a pretty tight position there and he's going to get drawn by Brian. But um, I think it's going to be Brian and Yeti yeah, now that are going to try and bring the fight a to Bosco. But he's got Chal a rotation is, uh, hole Chal is actually playing right above him and they think they do have some sort of kill hole. But it's not going to matter because Bosco is just going to white peek out of it. He takes down Yeti very effectively. But Crazy does manage to trade it right on out. Thinking they does go down. That's the smoke already off the board. Yeah, a bit of a utility loss there as smoke. But, um, you know, maybe a bit of a worthwhile trade. I mean, we've got the IQ out, but I guess IQ's maybe found everything that she needs to find at this point. She's not really going to get much opportunity when in the objective to whip out the scanner. Brian's going to be bringing the fight to Bosco now and uh, is going to get the kill, but Rampy's going to be there to trade him straight back out. Ooh, Rampy just narrowly missing out on a kill onto Kitchen there. If he'd have only held that angle for a second longer, I'm sure he would have picked it up. Crazy going to pick up the kill onto Chala. Three versus two now in favor of SSG. Rampy going to pick up that kill onto August, and that's going to bring us down to a two versus one as Acid gets the kill onto Redeemer. All down to Rampy. He's downstairs, and the plant has surely got to be going down at this point. Capital is going to use his asphyxiating bolts to zone off white stairs. Flash grenades are going to come out as well, and Rampy now is left with a hell of a task of peeking at the top of white stairs and trying to make anything stick. But the flash grenades are going to come out. They're going to miss the mark and not quite going to be uh, going to be so effective. But got to play a head glitching on the B bomb, which is going to cause Rampy a lot of trouble there. And uh, at this point, Rampy's in a pretty impossible situation, I think. Yeah, pretty impossible situation indeed. But he has actually managed. Managed, as I said it, I thought he was going to be able to clutch it out. He got a little bit more control back, but he's on top of White Stairs and he just gets picked up by Crazy. Easy as that. And Orglus fighting their first round. I think it was a well deserved first round. They did a great job of pushing Bosco out downstairs and making sure that they were able to trade off that kill as well. Rampy did get a trade, but ultimately, I think. It was. It must have been the control that they took from upstairs. Did they come? Did they come in through double window? Yeah. So the double window push was obviously the thing that really allowed them to be able to do that. And I'm not sure if SSG were focusing a little bit too much on holding downstairs. Well, also I think the big problem here was the setup for Space Station because if they're pushing through Attack double window, you can still nitro can. over the mattress. But Redeemer didn't have the nitro set up like that. He was wide peeking out of it, and if he had thrown the nitro. 
from a safer angle, he would have got a double kill there easily. Yeah, that's always the always the risk that you that you have to run with the nitro is it's when to use that nitro cell. <laughs> he um, obviously didn't quite get uh, get the absolute most out of it that he could have done. But we're going to go there yet again, and SSG maybe going to set up just a little bit differently this time. Although we are seeing a very similar lineup from both sides, but this time no Valkyrie. Yeah, no Valkyrie coming out just yet. I think Space Station realized it's not a great pick for them, considering that the IQ came out immediately from Ogles. And they typically do bring a lot of IQ. Um, they brought a lot of it on border as well. So, you know, we'll see how it does go down. We'll see how Ogles do react to this. But Space Station, maybe not looking as strong as they were on the previous map. Uh, it's deceiving, isn't it? Because Space Station had a really good showing on Laundry. But then on this re on, on the last round, on the last hold of Kids Dorms, they seem to have quite a, not quite a poor showing, but they kind of let a lot of map control, well, a lot of site control, I guess, go quite early on. And it ended up in August being able to get the plant down and really take a lot of advantage of that. So I think this round is going to sort of set the pace a little bit. And ooh, that's probably going to get Bandit Tricks right off there by Chala. But uh, the other side is going to get done as well as the Asphyxiating Bolt come in, eat up half of his health in a very short space of time. That's Chala now in a very awkward position downstairs in Kitchen Yeti. Going to pick up the kill onto Redeemer. No more Nitro for the Pulse this round. Chala is getting harassed by the drones as the push is going to come on into him. He's just going to try and waste as much time as he can. But my man going to come out with another grenade kill. My man's been on fire tonight with the grenades. Rampy there going to take out Brian just to try and stem the flow and pick up a kill of his own. Bosco playing close in the showers. So he's obviously knowing that he played this he played this last time with the Valk and with that shotgun in that close quarters, he's got a much, much better chance of coming out victorious if a push does come. And with Rampy playing at uh, just outside classroom, peeking on into bathroom, he should be able to assist him, but my man's going to find the head of Rampy, thinking they're going to get the kill over onto Crazy. Three versus two now in favour of uh, Orglus. Yeah, smokes are going to come out, but the plan is also going to be coming down, thinking they doesn't really have too much to contest this from. He moves all the way through. He doesn't go down for it. He gets the knife. Oh, my God. Acid goes down, but that's going to be Yeti instantly picking up that refrag. And now it's a 2v1. All down to Bosco. Does have an Azure Cell available to him. And, oh, my God, he almost gets that kill. He peeks all the way around. He can see the barrel, and he goes for the ADS. He takes down my man, and now it's a 1v1. Can bring this in, but he's very low HP. He's got to deal with the Yeti. Can he see where he is? He could potentially get the Nitro out from below. And we'll see how he goes down. He just put the Nitro down, but does get it. Oh my god, Bosco! He's 2 million IQ. He goes all the way up. He should have just have just about enough time to get this. Oh my god, what a Nitro from Bosco. That Nitro is incredible. That, there must have been some intel for him for that because... It was, it was almost perfect. It looked like it wasn't going to hit because it did look like he'd thrown it a little bit too far away. He kind of had his back to the player as he threw it. Yeah. But I mean, you, you can't argue with it. I think what he did, um, he might actually have this innate ability called Sonar. <laughs> it closes his eyes and he can picture the entire map and where people are. And then he throws out the Nitro. But yeah, I, I agree. There must have been some kind of intel of where Yeti was holding. But wow, really good job of uh, what was happening there. Space Station take round number three in uh, very, very, very close fashion. But we'll see how it goes down. We're into round number four. I'm actually going to see the Dukebi coming out from Yeti. Dukebi. Dukebi, Dukebi. So Just trying to bring a little bit of disruption and uh, it, can, it can also really help to pinpoint anyone that's lurking or roaming or anyone that's, uh, that's in the site and just get a bit of a closer idea as to where they are. I'm going to go as far as to say that that Bosco clutch was really important in this game because it really didn't look like they were going to win dorms and it's now enabled them to be able to go back down to laundry well they would have been able to do that they would have been able to do that anyway but they're going down there now with the confidence of winning upstairs if they'd have lost two up in dorms and then gone back down to laundry it would have been a little bit of a sour taste maybe going in 2-2 yeah. But now they're looking at being able to potentially take this 3-2. I think the reverse of that, though, is, you know, they win upstairs, so now they have Attackers to go downstairs. Basically. I mean, they don't have to, but all girls are going to know they're probably going to go downstairs now. Whereas if they had lost upstairs, there's still a potential for them to go then back upstairs. So maybe it does play against them a little bit, but yeah, there is that confidence factor to come in now. They're on 
map point. They do have one map up already in the series, so they should be going pretty confident. Yes, he's actually going to make his all the way into split, but now he loses the fight. Rampy just doesn't care. Dokubito, KB, I don't care. I'm just going to kill you anyway, Rampy says as he moves in. It's going to be a 5v4 now. And already losing that much utility, that is horrible for all of us. I mean, yes, he was on a bit of a mission there. He made the Dockerby call. He obviously had a good idea of where Rampy was playing because he was pre-aiming the spot. And I mean, Rampy just came off better because I think he's uh, just better. He, he's just better, but he's got a better gun for that for that sort of uh, engagement. From the SMG12 can be a little bit bouncy on the recoil and a bit more unpredictable. Legion's gun tends to be uh, much better at those tighter angles. So. You know, Rampy paid a price. He, he did lose a hell of a lot of, uh, of hit points for it. But he's, he's also been able to get droned out in Kitchen. He wasn't pushed by my man. And now he's been able to rotate all the way back down into meeting, into near the site. I, I really feel like that's a missed opportunity from August. I think the, there was a potential for a later trade there. They were definitely watching But it is still 5v4. There's still quite a lot of potential here for August to bring this in. Oh my god, that was almost a beautiful kill from Charla. Charla there just put in some hell of you know, some hell of good shots down onto highway. Brian gonna pick up that kill onto Bosco. So Mute gonna get caught out upstairs. Um on uh, maybe a bit of a lurk or a bit of a late roam, but Rampy's actually gonna get that kill onto my man as uh Maybe punishing my man for uh, for not taking the initiative earlier and, uh, and pushing when he had the drone information. It's allowed Rampy to get right back into dining. Rampy's almost doing laps of the map at this point. There's uh, there's absolutely nothing that Oglas can do to pin him down. They've probably got no idea where he is at this point. And he's now over in office. Minute left. And he's just waiting to make this late push as hatch control has been established. Crazy has dropped the hatch after smoking. Shala there, ready to get the kill. Shala getting another down there onto Brian. And it's now all down to Acid in a one versus four. The shots didn't land there, but Redeemer is there to pick up the pieces. Space Station Gaming gonna win it for the round on defense. Great coming out from Space Station here. Very conservative defense, but Crazy taking the fights where he can, taking 1v1s and consistently winning them and giving the space that they need because not only getting kills, right? But he's also getting very important kills coming down. There's some great synergy coming out from Space Station right now, especially the fact that Charles is almost picking people Picking Habana through highway window when he has, you know, no vision, but he also, he knows that he's pushing up. Yeah, the, the, the intel and the comms on that team right yeah. now are going to be absolutely on fire. Um, just off that last round, the way that Rampy played it was, he just allowed himself so much space. And the it, it, the rotations were just perfectly timed so that he could, you know, move through Attack the map, challenge when he needed to challenge, apply a little bit of pressure. It just it just allowed his team so much time and so much space to do what they needed to do. We're going to see a rear tower hold now, so I think this actually makes quite a bit of sense. SSG are there, are obviously understanding there that they kind of won the round on dorms by a great individual play, which isn't something that you can rely on every single time. You know, the plant was down, Bosco went huge and got a 2k and a nitro kill to, you know, kill the last two and win the round. So you can't rely on that kind of a play every single time. So I think uh, switching it up over to a rear tower does make a lot of sense. Yeah, it does make a lot of sense indeed. We were getting into round number five. I kind of don't like this when there's no mirror available, but Orgles might be thinking that as well, thinking, okay, they have a mirror. They probably won't go here. They've got a castle. They're probably going to go into dining, and they might have brought a lineup for that. Although, knowing how Orgles play this and knowing how generally teams play these days in this meta, especially in North America, they tended to take the same lineup and just been making it work. So it might not actually affect that strategy too much. Yeah, I think you, there's maybe a bit of value in in bringing, I don't know, there's maybe a bit of value in bringing a Blackbeard if you know that they're going to be going over to rear tower because there's a bit of window play to go on and there's a couple of angles that you can hold that way. Um, so, but I think you're right. The, the operators that we've seen tonight have been pretty much the same throughout with only very small adaptations being made. Um, although we are seeing Redeemer moving on to the Echo, which is uh, which is nice to see this time as, uh, as Echo's been available this game and uh, not yet played. Yeah, definitely. You do see those one or two people from each team are on that flex roll and they're changing up to see what their team needs. But Redeemer's actually going to be below with the Echo here. It's a very aggressive position to play the Echo because if the blue push came through, which I'm assuming is reinforcing Castle, that could be a bad 
place for your Echo to sit. But also, remember, he's got an ACOG, and he can contest this long angle, and he can pretty much contest that pixel angle as well, and he's going to know if he's getting droned way earlier. And there we go. That drone stopped just short, and that's actually really smart coming out from Acid. Acid there, not really wanting to waste his drone, just leaving it just out of reach of Redeemer. And uh, Redeemer there going to be faced with the decision of whether to move off and lose his position and uh, take out that drone or not. Yeti there, just making sure that meeting is clear, but still very aware. The, I think that at this stage, August can't be aware that Redeemer's playing downstairs because they surely would have pushed that a little bit harder. Attackers yeah, the yeah, potentially, Attackers potentially. The um, I think Acid does know there's someone down there. I don't know if he knows it's the Echo or not. Oh my god! How do you survive that? Rampy's still alive there. Capital Balls are going to come down as well as Nades. Rampy's still holding position here. He's still wasting so much time here on Tier 3, but no one's pushed him out just yet. He does have uh, an Echo Drone just below him to give him a little bit of intel. And we're to peek off of, but there we go. My man Fine gonna take him down. But look how much time he just wasted. And Nades is gonna jump out. He takes him down, but no, it's a double kill from Brian. Jumps in. He gets control of tier two. And now it's a 4v2. Charlie gonna try and recover the site as he pushes all the way up. But they've lost control of the big tower, and yet he is gonna start to plant on rear stage. But if they deny this plan, it can go very, very well indeed. Charlie gonna push all the way through onto meeting hole. Does get lit up, but does manage to light some up in return. Redeemer takes down Acid, but Yeti instantly trades it out onto Charla. Now it's the 3v1 all down to Redeemer, but he can't redeem the dream. Brian will take him down. All goes take round number five. From how much time was wasted upstairs, I'm really struggling to believe that August managed to clutch out that round because I looked at the time and it was like, I think 38 seconds and they I were repelling into T3. I think the big mistake that they were making there is that they were going for a rear stage plant, but they were taking control of tier two. I think if they planted tier two instead, there wouldn't have been that kind of doubt because if Charlo had won that gunfight in meeting hall and pushed through and denied the plant, Space Station could have won that round very easily. Oh yeah, without a doubt. I think had there been a little bit more ability for Redeemer to maybe jump into his Echo Drone, I think he still had one up at that point. I don't, I'm not sure if IQ found both of them. It, um, would have made, it was been able one to deny. tier two still, I'm pretty sure. So it would have been a little bit of an effort to get it down and in a position to be able to deny that plant, but you know, it, it could have been possible if he'd have had enough time. But we're going to go upstairs to dorms now. So we've seen August win here on attack. And we've also seen SSG win here on defense. Um, this is, of course, going to be the last round of the current format of uh, SSG on defense. Um, August on attack. It will then, of course, switch around. And uh, I think the scoreline kind of reflects on how this game's going. There's not a lot in it between these teams at the minute. We've seen them go neck and neck on Clubhouse, purely based, like we've said, on, on the way that the bands went and the fact that it kind of fell a little bit more attacker favored this evening. And we're seeing things, you know, pretty, pretty level on Oregon as well. Definitely, definitely. And uh, Oregon is a little bit more of a linear map, I would say. So I'd say this counts against Space Station because they've had a decent amount of prep going into this and they've had a decent amount of um, adaptability. And we've seen Oglus do pretty well so far on Border and Consulate, which are both maps that may be Consulate less though, but they're fairly linear. So I think Oglus does better on this kind of state where Space Station's advanced preparation isn't going to necessarily benefit them a whole lot. Orgulus seem very good at taking control of the map at a point and then just pushing up as like quite a, you know, almost like holding sort of like a half court defense and like really pushing up as a team. And the times that SSG, SSG have won on defense has been, they've been able to kind of get behind that and be a little bit slippery and cause them a little bit of trouble. So I think you're right in what you say is that Orgulus do seem to favor the lane orientated maps and the ones that may be a little bit more linear in, in the way that they play out. But having said that, um, you know, SSG have done a great job so far of being able to, I mean, look at that for a prime example. Rampy there not choosing not to shoot the drone. Attackers he's calling out that the drones are going to be going that way. And that's, you know, Bosco can deal with that. But he's only shooting the drones if he absolutely has to because he really doesn't want to give his location away at this point. Yeah, but there you go. Yet he will be able to successfully drone him out there in meeting hole. Rampy is still holding down firm, but this the last time they defended upstairs, it was not great for them. It did come down to a very, very, very close Nitro coming out from Bosco. Admittedly, great clutch, but coming down to clutch scenarios does not mean you're coming down to a great defense. We'll see how Space Station do lock out this, and we'll see exactly what they want to do here, but they're running a very similar set as what they did the first time they defended here. 
And I'm not sure if I like it or not. Look at Yeti here, he's just been able to crouch, walk his way pretty much all the way up Armory Stairs into sight, get some shots down onto a guy playing in Kiz, but Redeemer is there to get the kill on the crossfire. A couple of guys have gone in through double window, thinking they'd be able to pick up a kill of his own as Crazy and my man pick up one each respectively. August, a slew of kills coming through right now as Brian gets another three versus two, effectively two versus two as we have got crazy down but he has been picked up shallot is gonna get okay, the kill onto brian though so it is still gonna be a two versus two the diffuser surely is going to be going down at some point now there's a stray nitro cell on the floor which isn't really going to be doing anything to deny the plant bosco underneath manages to get the shotgun kill onto the planter one versus two now my man has got it all to do is he going to be able to pick up this kill he gets the book shotgun through the wall does manage to pick up Charla and is going to try and plant this diffuser he's got plenty of time left to do so 20 seconds on the clock bosco underneath now making his way onto white stairs he's got to push at this point because if he doesn't it's going to allow my man to hold an angle on through kids door bosco's now got a really tall order with this smg 11 to try and get anything going here i'm not sure if he's got any intel as to where my man is there the shots are going to come through that's going to let him know he's going to draw for the shotgun is he going to be able to connect with these shots I'm trying to get a bit of a quick beat going on but my man is going to pick up the round what a great clutch really good from my man and he played that very very smart but also bosco is playing it smart as well i kind of feel like bosco could have gone below and potentially killed him while he was planting but that's a very tall order it's a very big risk when you're just relying on the shotgun and yeah like it's, it just came down to that one gunfight and he he loses it really well played by my man overall but that was an insanely close round again coming out on that top floor defense but we're gonna switch it around now and space station are gonna move through onto the attack and we'll see what they do as we see a laundry defense coming out. And I'm really hoping that Yeti's picking the dock for the bulletproof cam. We shall have to see. Bosco, I can't believe how close he was to another near clutch on the same objective. I think Defenders with like serious bomb. hindsight, Defenders looking back attacking. after the heat of the moment, if he did watch the diffuser through the shotgun hold that he just killed the cap tower, that would have probably been the better play at that point because it would have really forced my man to plant, but there was just a, so much time left on the clock that there was just too many variables at that stage. And he, he just left him, well, he didn't leave himself. He was just found in quite a difficult position. Um, but my man did a great job of clutching out that round. So we're all even now going into the first round of attack for SSG and of course the first round of defense for August. Um, I wonder if we have seen the, uh, the, the old bulletproof cam that you're so uh, so keen to find. Yeah, he did. He put it down um, in like a default spot, you know where the baskets are in laundry, like just on the west side. Yeah, thank you, Sierra, for doing that. Our wonderful observer, as always, moving through and just giving you a bit of intel and a bit of more setup to what's going on here. But we're going to move through into round number seven. It's going to be the first attack round coming out from Space Station. Let's see exactly how they take it. It's 3-3 all tied up at the moment, and this is kind of the scoreline I was expecting on Oregon. I believe stats-wise it's still the most balanced map. Well, I mean, this certainly attests to that. It's uh, We've seen three rounds each. We've actually got a player down at the minute. My man's down, and Bosco's going to aggressively peek up and trying to convert one of these kills. Does manage to get some good shots in, but doesn't really want to lo lose his life at this stage. Yokai drone comes out. Rampy picks up that kill onto my man. So... I think Rampy lost a lot of hit points early on, and I think that was maybe a little bit of an engagement he found himself in with the Valkyrie there. But ultimately, it looks as though SSG have managed to get control of Kitchen and, and the west side, which is you know quite a typical take for, for Oregon to kind of push through from west side, uh, clear out Kitchen, and then move on to Meeting and, and Hatch area. So they've done a good job of that because they've done that very relatively quickly. Um, you know, in, in around less than a minute, but we've got Yeti there, going to be playing a really nice angle from Tower Stairs. Got full visibility all the way through Meeting, with both sides of Meeting Double Door open. Um, so he's even got visibility in through Classroom and the top of Main Stairs for Laundry. Definitely. Yeti still on this push as well. Strins trying to go for the pre-fire, still trying to get the picks, but it's not going on just yet. Space Station seemed to be pretty much concentrating on their laundry take here, which I definitely can't blame them for. But Acid still has an Echo Drone up in meeting hold to give Yeti the info to push off of this. But I can't help but feel that this is a misplaced coming out from Acid. Yeah, there we go. He, he's going to drop it, so that's good. He's going to try and push it into position here to deny the plant going down. But this plant really ought to be going down soon rather than later. No IQ coming out from Space Station. I don't really know where these Echo Drones are. 
it's, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be on the job of Bosco really to get the Thatchers deployed and to try his best to destroy any of these Yokai drones. I'm not sure if he glimpsed one with one of the... Uh... Oh, Brian, they're going to get a really nice kill onto Thinking Nade as, uh, as he just goes prone right at the hatch and then loses his head. He gets absolutely domed. You can see the Capital with the crossbow in hand waiting to provide that cover as, uh, as he switches through, just getting his smokes out just to allow Chala the opportunity to push on inside. Toxic Bay comes through, but it's too long and in the wrong spot as Chala has gone for a plant on the washing machine area. Another Toxic Bay come out, so they've baited out a lot of utility at this stage and the Firebolts now come out as well. This is all looking pretty good, but no, Chala is going to fall and is going to lose the Diffuser and be down, but Redeemer is there to take his place. Yeti picks up the kill onto Rampy and Yeti picks up another one onto Chala. Crazy with one of his own. Kills are coming in thick and fast. Yes, he's going to get the last one. And ultimately, SSG ran out of time there on that push. And Orgus just had so much utility to deny that plan. I think also there's kind of a little bit misplaced utility coming out from Space Station there. Like, they put the Firebolts down, but they're not putting them down in the places where this is actually being contested from. So they put it in the, in the hallway, and they put one down on the front of... I, don't, I can't tell if he missed it or not, and he meant to put it in the supply closet, but he put it in front of the supply closet, and I can't help but feel that that was a little bit of a mistake coming out from Space Station. Regardless, they will lose the first attack round here, but don't matter, it doesn't matter, because Orglus did the exact same thing. Yeah, there becomes a point where you kind of expect that Laundry's going to be a tough job without a mirror. So it, it's not around that I think that Orglus are going to be... Um, Sorry, it's not around that SSG are really going to be beating themselves up over at this point um, because Dawn does tend to be a little bit more favoured toward uh, the uh, toward attackers. Yeah, and we definitely did see quite a lot of evidence of that coming through. We'll see how Orglus do take it through as we do see, I'd say, a fairly default lineup coming out from them. But my main concern here is, and I don't think my man is running it, is the lack of a bulletproof cap coming down and the IQ yeah, being chosen here from Space Station. Left and we saw a fairly similar lineup coming out from Orglus when they attacked him. Yeah, I mean, the IQ is almost a bit of a staple Attack for this bomb site, purely because you're expecting the Valkyrie, you're expecting, you know, even lesions to a point. They can cause devastation late on toward the round, and uh, if the IQ can at least spot them and call them out, that can always be very valuable as well. I know that, you know, they can be easy to find with, uh, you know, good drone work. But, you know, it doesn't, doesn't harm to, uh, to bring the IQ for that reason. Rampy, they're pretty certain that someone's going to be playing over in tower, and it is going to be Yeti. Yeti just trying to uh, harass and waste a little bit of time here. But uh, it does appear as though we've already got somebody on the repel of tier 3, and Yeti is going to start to get pushed pretty soon. The uh, drones are going to come out through onto, uh, onto tier 3, and no doubt going to know where he is because he's shooting through the floor. Yeti now, you know, probably be well placed to rotate off that. And uh, he's going to go all the way through laundry, maybe, up armory stairs, and just get away with his life. He's wasting nearly a minute there, which is a hell of a lot of time. Yeah, quite a lot of time indeed to start to waste on this push, but there's still plenty of utility up for spaces to just start to do some work. Yeah, Rampy's pointing out. You just pointed it out that you're just going to get peeked from somewhere. And yeah, he just starts getting peeked out from Kid Storm's windows. Rampy has already lost quite a lot of HP. This isn't looking good for Space Station because there's so many places you can get peeked from. They don't really seem to have too much intel where the peeks could actually come from. Though. No, there's a, there's a lot of drone work going on. I think the conscious of any IQ play, Bosco's actually made him made his way inside tower. Um, so any IQ cameras that are out there are going to be pretty difficult for him to find at this point. But loads of drone work coming out from SSG and it almost seems like they're a little bit undivided in where this push is actually going to manifest itself at this point. Yeah, a little bit indeed. We'll see how it just go through. It's just about a minute left on the clock. And here we go. Smokes are going to start to come out here from Brian to try and deny the push coming through Attackers the kids' dorms the windows. We'll see how that is going to work out for them. The space Station are moving up fairly effectively so far. And they are going to start to open up the main window as well as going for the wall bang. And they're convinced that someone is playing kids. But there we go. Beautiful shot coming out from Rampy. Go. It's going to be pretty good for them to try and jump in here and go for the push. Bosco's Claymore finds a unsuitable crazy and just runs through for a flank. He's going to go down. And now it's a 3v5. Not looking too good for August at all here. 
as the push starts to come through, but my man's going to pick up one for three, and oh my god, Yeti on the roam is going to pick up one, but the fuse is going to go down, it's now a 3v2, not looking too good for August to try and go for a retake, they'll try and do it anyway, Yeti's just going through onto the small doms, and sees what he can do here, tries to find a gunfight, does move all the way through into his doms, he pulls out the pistol, he does take him down, but it's going to be my man who picks up that from below, it's now a 2v2, Yeti just trying to push out here and see what he can do, but Rampy takes him down, it's now all down to the man to try and clutch this in. It's a 1v2, it's all down to him, he's got to find two, just get lit, they know where he is, he pushes through, he tries to find the gun skill, he tries to find the kill, but he can't find anything, he's getting pushed out, but he doesn't get the kill, oh my god, there goes Rampy, but instantly traded out by the hero Bosco. Space Station, take round about eight and tie things up for a piece. Bosco there not wanting to relinquish his title as clutch master of dorms and uh, and making making short work of it and picking it up in the end against my man there. But my man did a great job of, uh, of playing downstairs, picking up some kills on the way back to the objective and uh, it got a lot closer than it looked like it should at one point because with the plan down in that situation and peeking from the top of white stairs, it can be very difficult to even get in the bomb site. Um, so a very good job there, but it's going to leave us all square at four all. And Orglis are going to opt to go back up to kids' dorms and uh, and try the hand there again, opting not to go over to rear tower. Defenders, protect your bombs definitely, from being definitely. defused and, by uh, And I'd, I'd say that's fine without having uh, a mirror on the board. If you're not going to... I just I just really hate when teams go big tower and there's no mirror because I just don't think it's viable at all. And we haven't really seen evidence that it is viable, I think. Not in this game. Well, we've seen it once and it got one attack, so yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So, we will see how round number nine is getting underway. As you see, Orglus are going to attempt a Kid Storm Storm's main hold defense once again. And this is looking like an exact replica of what we saw yeah, from the level. first half as well right now. And in fact, round for round is still the same. Five seconds to insertion. Yeah, looking, yeah, it is. It's, um, it's very similar. It's, I mean, you spoke of it earlier that Oregon's one of the most balanced maps, and I really do feel like that's pretty... You really can't argue with it in this scenario that that is true. But there's been a couple of occasions where it's been either a good individual play or there's been something that's kind of shifted the tide and that's made, you know, one side win or the other. So I, I guess that both these teams are just needing to work on what we've been talking about all evening, which is this adaptation, and it looks as though SSG are going for it this time because... It looks as though they're going to try and open generator room, which isn't something that we've seen them try to do just yet. Yeah, that is true. I think this is pretty much one of the default plan spots they're going through, and I would prefer Space Station to push it this way than push another way, mostly considering the fact that there's no pulse on the board. Now, when there's no pulse on the board, you're pretty free to try and plant down gen. You've got to be aware of the rotate hole on top of white, and this is why there's a book on the board for Thinking Nade. Anyone seen Thinking Nade? His book? It's the Afro. It's the Afro that actually hides his enormous brain to be able to make 200 IQ book plays. Drone ready. Well, let's hope that we see some of these 200 IQ plays coming on through as Redeemer makes his way in with his drone just to see what the story is on in the site. Struggling to find anyone at this stage, but he knows that they're going to be there somewhere. And uh, as you said, we've got somebody playing at the top of White Stairs. It looks as though Redeemer's maybe going to try and use an asphyxiating bolt to deal with that and allow Chala to push in and get the plant down. The plant does start to go down, but not before Chala gets a kill over onto Acid. Brian there just going to be trying to spam some shotgun shots through the smoke. Yeti picking up that kill onto Bosco of the Thatcher. And the plant has gone down. I was just going to say, I'm sure it's going down somewhere. Brian there making a smoke grenade toss, but not quite in the right location. Crazy going to pick up the kill from underneath onto Thinking Nade. Chala is down and is going to get finished off by the Toxic Bay. Rampy is going to be left to try and deal with this alongside Redeemer. Does manage to pick up one kill. Redeemer picks up one of his own as well, but my man is going off. Off. Rampy gets that kill, but then gets traded out immediately by the Claymore. Crazy is the last man standing, and Redeemer is the last attacker who is going to come off victorious. There's not a lot of time left on the defuse. He's going to have to get on it very oh soon. If he does, he picks up the kill. I'm not sure if he's got time to get over to this diffuser and get it down. He does manage to spot it, but there's not going to be enough time left for Crazy. That's very unfortunate for him. He did a great job of getting that kill, but... Ultimately, Space Station got the bomb down and will manage to hold the post plant for just long enough. What a shot from Crazy there at the end. And yeah, living up to his namesake, he is crazy. But yeah, it is going to be a victory for Space Station. Great planting.
coming out from them, great push coming out from them, and now they've started to change things up. So, round number 10 getting underway. You're all close in this situation. What is your thought process then? I think the thought process at this point is that Laundry's been won twice by, sorry, three times by defenders. Um, so you're looking pretty good to take this round and take it to 5-5. Five, five. There's nothing that they've done terribly wrong in the previous rounds that's sort of removed them from being able to have a chance of winning this time. I'm not seeing on uh, you know too much different in the lineup. I genuinely think this one could go to overtime, and I really think it's going to come down to a coin toss as to who gets the attacker or who gets the defender, the defender inside. Well, I mean, if it goes to overtime, then three attacks have been won and three defenses have been won by each side. So I don't think the coin toss would even matter because it's still perfectly balanced, as all things should be. But it, it it would in the sense that if you were the team that got Camera defense, you would chose down chose to go down to laundry. That's true. Defense has yeah. been the hundred percent win rate for defenders. Then it makes a big difference. Yeah, no, that is definitely the point to bring. So we'll move into round number ten. We'll see another laundry defense coming out. Space Station have a great opportunity to try and break this balance out and prove that it's not just defenders you can win laundry. Attackers can win it too. They have Attackers everything have they the need utility-wise to take this. To I think though, last time they were not only too late in pushing out, um, but maybe they should have pushed backside because Orgles had the right idea with their push. They had great control of meeting wall. They could push down the backside and they had the utility to be able to do it. But when the execute actually came down from Orgles on that first round, it was all over the place. And they just didn't seem to have enough intel on the actual site itself to effectively do that push. And I think they just kind of went, you know what, well, let's just push anyway. And let's just try and trade off each other. But it just kind of just went all pear-shaped for them. But it does look like Space Station, again, are going to go for this um, front side push into Laundry, which I don't disagree with. And without a mirror, it can be uh, decent. But we saw last time, it was kind of ineffective planting coming out from them and uh, ineffective utility usage. They didn't start basing the utility out early enough, I don't think. Or Well, either that or Ogles did a great job of keeping it in the back pocket and only using it when they absolutely had to. Um, I'm, did we, I'm sure we... Did we have an echo last time was that Ogles defended? Yeah, so that, echo. That's quite a main... You know, that's quite a big difference there. Um, and I think the echo will have definitely played a big part in helping to deny that plan. Um, but yet he's still playing on this, uh, this tower stairs half landing with good visibility all the way through meeting. As, uh, as he's just getting a little bit more aggressive, gets droned out by Rampy there, and still trying to hold this angle and push this point. There's no real problem with that, but Rampy is very much aware, and uh, I'm sure there's going to be a bit of a head-to-head -head here at some point. But there's some holes open in the floor, and Rampy's drone's going to get taken out as well, so Rampy's really stuck between a rock and a hard place and trying to root Yeti out of here, and a run-out comes out from Acid, but Rampy does manage to get that kill. He loses over half of his hit points for his trouble, but he is still there to assist his team, and now he's just going to be able to wait and see if Yeti is going to push. They've got a pretty good pinch on him now, and I'm not sure if they're fully aware of that, but Chala and Rampy between them can pretty much remove Yeti from the game, but Bosco's going to do that anyway by finding his head, but my man is going to trade it straight back out on to Bosco. My man, they're going to sit with the shotgun on the rear tower stairs and the time is running out for the attackers, but it is looking pretty good for them. They've got a lot of utility left on the board and they've still got capped out with some smokes. Yeah, definitely. And just 35 seconds left to go on the clock. Space Station in a great position now, but they're going to have to start moving fast. Brian now stuck in supply closet. We'll be able to try and put down. Oh no, he missed it. He's going to try and put that down very, very quickly now to try and deny his point going down. That's a better angle to take it down. It looks like, yeah, Redeem is going to start to take damage. He does go down. No, he doesn't. Oh my god, is he going to stick the plant? No, he came out of it. But there we go. Brian does go down. It's all down to Baman in a 1v4 clutch situation. 10 seconds left to go. All he has to do is deny the plant, but no, he can't get it out. Rampy go as he just jumps down, takes down Baman and saves the round. Beautiful from Rampy. Completely saved that round for Space Station. And they've broken the uh, they've broken the mold. They've broken the curse. They've broken the curse. I'm not sure if it's a curse. Curse sounds a little bit too bad. It's broken the uh, magical seal. That's not a curse. It's, it's broken the pattern. Which is good because it means that it's it's winnable on attack, which is very important because Orgos are going to go there again. Well, I mean, it's it was still good from them. Uh, they had the right idea. I still think, though, that again from Orgos, they haven't really bought much um, 
kind of like different operators. They brought the Legion instead at uh, that time, instead of the Echo, which, if anything, kind of went against them. Yeah, the Echo was very important, and they've obviously recognized that because they're going to bring it again this round. I'm not sure how to feel about the pulse here. I, I guess I get it because the Valk cams have been really that effective, and if you're not getting utility out of Valk cams because they're getting destroyed by AQ, and you're probably not going to get much utility out of the Echo if the IQ's still on the board by the time uh, the XQ starts to come through, then pulse is the next best thing, right? He can stay in the back of supply closet, he can get a decent amount of intel where the push is going to come down. He's not going to get perfect intel, but it's enough. I think the main advantage of the Pulse is that the only risk, well, it's not even a risk, but the only thing that's going to happen is he's going to get found out as to where he is, but with Laundry being a fairly safe haven for a Pulse and that none of it's destructible, he's not actually going to get shot by the IQ, so it doesn't really matter that the IQ knows where he is. He could get Thatchered and that would take his scanner out of the equation a little bit, but it's definitely a, a, a worthwhile pick um, from uh, coming out there from Orglus, but... You know, you never know. I think it, you've got to ask yourself, has the Jaeger been doing good for him? Has the Legion been doing good for him? It, it's all so difficult to tell, but I, all I know is that my man has been going off at the minute. So if he's willing to switch on to another operator and flex things around on match point, you know, he's obviously got a good idea of what he's going to be doing with it. Yeah, he should have a good idea. Dean's just going to see Bosco oh, just trying reloaded. to hunt down the way he can and open up the big tower. I love this angle as well from Bosco. Not only the fact that he's opening stuff up with the LA5, he's also got the rest of his team pushing Big Tower and he's cutting off the rotate there. And they're just trying to force members of Wallace out of here because Yeti's played here pretty much uncontested the whole other rounds, but there we go. Rampy picks him up, Space Station have already cleared Big Tower and a pretty prominent member of Orglus who's been sitting there almost uncontested every single round. Yeah, Yeti seems to find an angle that he likes to play with the dock and just kind of rock with that. We've seen it happen on border, and we've seen it happen multiple times, um, especially on this defense on uh, on Oregon as well. But my man, they're going to rotate back down into sight. He understands that at this point, SSG have taken pretty good control over Big Tower. In fact, full control and pretty much full control over meeting as well. So he's going to rotate back down. He's still got a C4. There's a lot of viability there for him to start denying the plan when that should come down halfway into the round now. And uh, I think SSG, it's fair to say, have made pretty good progress this round thus far. They definitely have, and I think that picking Yeti that early is definitely very important to getting control because now they can go for a backside push. And you can see Redeemer's just doing that exactly. And I love this push coming out because I'm going to bet that both the Echo Drones are preparing for a laundry side push. We can't quite see them at the moment, but there we go. There's one Echo Drone, and I said it has yeah, quickly realized there's a backside push coming down. So he's going to have to move that into position, hopefully they get picked up. No, the other one is actually in the backside. So this is good positioning for Master's Echo Drone here. Hopefully you should be able to get in position and deny this push coming down. But SSG on this position droning, we made this point uh, during the Wise game, and this is something that Spacey should be doing so, so well. They're not allowing themselves to get flanked. This position drone coming out from them, but 40 seconds left to go on the clock. They need to start going for that execute, and they need to take these Echo Drones. They do still have an IQ on the board, so it should be good. And their Rampy is going to be drawing them all out. The Nitro comes out, but nine Rampy just goes flying. Beautiful Nitro coming out there from a man, and 25 seconds left to go on the clock. Echo Drone's going to move into position. Nade tries to move all the way in and go for the plant, but the Echo Drone's right there. He's going to deny it, but then one of the Echo Drones goes down. I don't know if they can see the plant going down there. They can. There we go. Thinking Nade goes down for it. And we'll see Frosco just moving in, just get the kill. Chala picks up the diffuser, tries to go for it, but it's a 2v3. He has to get the kills. My man moves in. He takes down Bosco, but Chala gets one of his own. And the Baron comes out. It's 1v2. It's all down to Chala. He has to go for the plant right now, but no, he can't. He runs out of time. And Orglus will take round number 11. One round away from bringing us into overtime on our second map. That was a really good hold there from Orglus. They did a great job of not peeking anything until they absolutely had to. They had all the utility in place to deploy it at the time that they needed to. The rotation of the Yokai drone was really key in making sure that that plant wasn't able to go down. But I can't help but think that there was maybe some utility left on the side of SSG to try and assist that plant in going down. You know, I'm not sure how many Thatchers, I'm sorry, I'm not sure how many EMP grenades Bosco had left at that point. But if he throws one in with the planter, the planter's almost guaranteed to be able to get that bomb down because the smoke just wasn't quite right. That is true, and and I will agree that the Echo was pretty much the saving grace of that. But I think what actually won them the round is, yeah, okay, the Echo, and it comes through, and it all starts to just deny the plant. 
But that's only been allowed to happen because Rampy died to an incredible Nitro coming out from a man. If that had not happened, Space Station probably would have taken the round. Yeah, it was it was the best operator at that point for Orbitz to take out in the IQ because IQ would have more than likely been able to at least see the Echo Drone and call the plan well, off I want to say as well that um, the Echo Drones were being played very aggressively coming out from Acid, but he only ever started doing that once the IQ got picked. And now he knows his Echo Drones can't get picked and might as well just play them aggressively. So, so yeah, like, good adaptation coming out from Orglis, but I kind of hope it feels that they changed their setup Attackers for basically the no here. reason last Attackers time. Is to a bomb because they didn't it. bring the... They didn't bring the Echo last time. They attacked. They defended that, right? Moving on into the round, and we're going to see Kids Dorms come up again. We have seen this map, oh, sorry, we've seen this site defended successfully only one time. So I know we've been, um, you know, the stats haven't really always rang so true this evening, but they're always a good indication of how it's going to go. Um, so we've only seen it successfully defended one time. We've seen it successfully attacked, uh, I believe it's four. Um, so it's looking pretty good at this point for SSG to close this one out. They're almost certainly going to want to do it and avoid going to a third map. And I'm sure that they're, uh, they're going to give it their all here. Yeti proving himself a bit of a nuisance on T3 of Tower. Wasting a little bit of the Capital utility as well in the asphyxiating bolts. And uh, drone work going to come through. He's going to lose his ADS to that EMP. But he's still wasting a hell of a lot of time. Wasted over a minute now trying to root out Yeti. And uh, he's showing no signs of wanting to go anywhere anytime soon. It looks as though we're going to have a bit of an upside down repel. And another Capital Firebolt coming out. But Yeti still unfazed and unhurt. He's, he's convinced that someone's going to pick that window. But Acid is actually going to run out of the bottom of tower and get that kill onto Redeemer himself. Or Oh no, it was actually from, from Kid's windows. Yeah, really good peek coming out. Great teamwork coming out there from August to get that pick. That's a very important pick because that's Capital done already. They should be able to hold onto tier 3 doing that and Space Station going to have to try and shift their attack somewhere else. Yes, he's still holding on to tier 3, however. Space Station are going to try and rotate into Gen, it seems like. I mean, last time they did this, it was actually a very successful push from them. But this time, they don't have the Capital to help out. Capital was crucial to their push, their, their push last time. And the smoking off of the top of White Stairs and Kids would just enable Chala to run and get a kill and get the plant down. Without that, they're going to have to do some good work with the book on Thinking Nade to try and root out anybody that's playing at the top of White Stairs. And they've not left themselves all too much time to be able to do that. Moving into the final 45 seconds of the round. Rampy there going to be making his presence known at the bottom of White Stairs. Just maybe trying to detract a little bit from what's going on at, uh, in Generator Room with Chala. Maybe trying to perhaps get the plant down, but... I'm not sure that he's going to have had the sufficient cover to get himself in. He's not. The smoke grenade is going to be coming out, and that's going to be what's eating, eating away a little bit of his health. Brian there with another really well-timed smoke grenade, but Charles actually going to use that to run in, but Brian predicts it. Rampy does get the kill, but it is a second or two too late. Yes, he's going to get that kill as well onto Ryan, and all of a sudden, Loads of kills are going to come out back to back to back. Bosco is now going to actually be getting the bomb down, but he's going to switch it out and fake it. My man's going to get the kill. My man's been going off tonight. He's been doing a great job. It was, it was a crazy final few seconds there, and I really did think that it was going to go the way of SSG at a point, but Rampy was just a second too late on that kill at the, on, uh, on Brian on White Stairs. Just a, a, an absolute nanosecond. Just a second too late, but also kind of just poor roam clearing coming out from Space Station there, um, which, you know, is not something I thought I would say in this matchup because they've been pretty consistent otherwise, is that there's still a pulse on the board from below. And obviously they know that, and which, which is why he was trying to bait out the pulse from Nitro, but that I don't really think it should be an issue at that point. They should be able to take control of the site without having to worry about the pulse from below or take the site from below itself. They have a book available. I, I just don't think they're using the utility Attack maybe in the correct way. Or maybe they're trying to go for a push that relies on certain things to happen and then they don't happen and Charla dies and all of a sudden you lose a lot of momentum with it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like you say, losing the momentum of your plan to losing the bomb in the middle of gen room after running in. and I think he, did a, he took a great initiative there to try and use the smoke as a little bit of cover. And I think he was relying on... Um, Rampy playing at the bottom of white and distracting Brian at that point. So Brian would throw the smoke, turn around to deal with the guy on the bottom of white, be able to run in and get the plant off. But Brian just jabated him and really didn't take his eye off the plant, which was, you know, 
They really don't take your eye off the ball in that scenario because otherwise it's going to hit you in the face. And he really didn't take his eye off the ball. He didn't take his eye off the ball. He knew whose hands it would be in. That was Shala. And it led them to be, you know, it led them to winning the round, which was which was very crucial at that point. So we're going to go down and see laundry room yet again. And I think this has become the typical setup now for Orglus because it's the one that worked has, has worked previously for them with the yokai drones. And I think this is finally some of their adaptation coming through, and it's showing what they're able to do when the you know are being faced with problems and how they're actually going to be able to overcome them. Yeah, and, and you know, adaptation has definitely been Space Station's strong suit with, throughout the series, and we've already seen good, you know, stuff from that. But I kind of feel about Orgulus. They already have strats they want to do. They don't really want to change them up, but also they're not really having to because they've already been working fairly well to their favor, and it's just been looking so, so close throughout this entire series. And I can't help but feel that all those they just don't even need to adapt to this. They can rely on their gun skill quite well as well. And yeah, there we go. Yeti's just going to be holding down onto flag here. Oh my god. I thought he was just about to get naded out of that position there. As well as my man is going to be playing around here. Interesting that a bandit is going to be playing immediately. I think they're just trying to hold, take, you know, keep hold of Beaton a little bit and play Yeti in a different spot. But Rampy's going to find Yeti. Then Crazy is going to find Rampy straight away. So losing the IQ pretty early on, that's going to deny a lot of information as to where the Yokai drones are when the plant does start to go down. That is something that we did see become, you know, that, that was kind of the start of the undoing of SSG last time that they attacked this bomb site. Um, they really struggled to locate those Yokai drones and ultimately the Yokai was able to deny the plant. So it looks as though they've managed to push everybody out of meeting and you know, Bruce and Yeti out of meeting, I think at that point it's a fair assumption to say that Orglus have done a good job of that and they can then drop back onto site. But it does look as though we've got my man who's uh, he's, he's on an absolute train, he's, he's on a steamroller and he's, uh, he's trying to put some shots through, but the plant is actually going to start to go down. Toxic Bay has come out and I think that does just disrupt the plant ever so slightly. Charles is desperate to drop there, but he knows it's not the right thing to do. They were so close to getting that plant down without anybody realizing it, but Brian was just there ready and waiting, watching it. That's all three of the Toxic Bays now have been deployed. Oh, sorry, he has got one left in his pocket. He has only deployed two, but with 35 seconds off the, on the clock, he's going to want to deploy his next one pretty soon as the plant does start to go down pretty much in plain sight. And I think that's a pretty good debate because it's not quite a default plant spot. Brian there just putting shots down into thin air. Bosco picking up that kill onto my man. And the smoke grenade, the final smoke grenade is going to come out. Yokai drone still in play, ready to help deny this plant. Brian's going to pick up that kill onto Redeemer. And there's not going to be a awful lot that thinking they can do in that situation. He's no doubt going to get denied, but no, the Yokai drone has been destroyed. Brian's picking up the kill on Chala. Bosco's going to get the kill on to Acid. Another two kills are going to come out thick and fast. One versus one. Thinking that he's not going to plant the diffuser. He doesn't have enough time. That was so much closer than it needed to be. I thought Orglux were going to walk away with that one, and all of a sudden it's a one versus one. Insanely close. I mean, Space Station did really well. Because, I mean, I was thinking the same thing. I'm thinking, yeah, the, there's still the Echo Drone up. There's still so much utility up. Even though all three smokes have already been used, Orgus is still in a really strong position. And then all of a sudden, they lose the Echo Drone. And you know the call just went out. I've lost the Echo Drone. We need to push. So they push all the way up. They pull up for refrags. Orgus play it really smart. And they end up in a 2v1. Thinking they brings it into a 1v1. But at that point, he's either got to plant or push. I think he I think he chose right based on what he knew was going on at that point. But obviously he just ended up unlucky and uh unfortunate for him indeed. Defenders but it is gonna be now overtime match point as we move into round number fourteen on map number two. This has been an insanely close series throughout. And uh Space Station all of a sudden on the losing foot. Yeah, it's not somewhere that they've, they used to be in this evening. Um, you can see there, Rampy, just how much this means to him. 17 kills and 10 deaths. My man there, not too far behind him on 14 to 9. Um, yeah, I mean, you can just see how much it means to both these sides. Both these teams are not leaving anything on the line. They're bringing, they're bringing everything they've got tonight and they're throwing it at, uh, at their opponent. They're going to see what sticks. And it, it just shows how good, you know, how high the level of competition has been this far and how much these teams both want it. Because don't forget, it's not all over after this. They've then got to go to Invitationals and they've got to, you know, do pretty good work there as well. So this is almost only the beginning. So it's only fitting that it's a real, you know, a real battle, if you will. A real battle.
battle of titans coming through here. Indeed, we'll see exactly how it's going to work out. The overtime match point, Orglus only having to win this one attack to bring it in. But it's going to be a laundry defense coming out here from Space Station. And you made the point that this should then shift it into the favor of um, of whoever gets attack first. Sorry, whoever gets defense first because they get the laundry. But now you're in this situation where they just won laundry. Oglas haven't successfully attacked laundry yet. And I'm not I'm not saying that they can't. That's a that's a yikes. Yeah, that's unfortunate for us. And I'm not saying that they can't, but it's seeming unlikely that they will be able to pull it off because Space Station couldn't pull it off either. Uh, when there was a, an echo on the board. So, it seems like a bit of a weird situation. So, if Space Station takes this round on the defense, they move back onto the attack, and it's probably going to be a kid's defense, and those have been some very, very close rounds coming through from both sides. So, there's still a lot of viability, and we'll see exactly how that is going to work out. We're about halfway into the round now. Yeah, like, like you say, it's, uh, it's going to be tricky to see how SSG are able to defend this, purely because this really is a big map, a, bit, a big round for them because they're not going to want to take it to another map. Um, so that can, you know, play in, in different ways. It can make players play really well, or it can make players, you know, maybe make some small mistakes. You can see there, Bosco just getting droned out. He's going to no doubt rotate himself back down onto laundry stairs when he feels like it is safe to do so. Um, but like you say, there's there's quite a lot of time gone out of the game, but. There's a lot of control still held on main stairs. My man's going to get the kill onto the smoke. That's huge at this point. That's a lot of deniability removed. The smoke grenades are going to come in from Orglis, and the push is so. My man's going to pick up another Yeti, getting one of his own. Bosco going to pick up one with the shotgun, all down to Bosco and Rampy. The C4 comes out, but it doesn't connect. Rampy picks the kill, and he picks up a second onto Brian. I think he almost nearly shot Bosco then in his excitement. Two versus two. The diffuser is in the hands of my man. Bosco is very well placed with the shotgun, the nade comes out, he manages to run out of the way, but the plant is going down. Rampy and Bosco are gonna have to push this right now. Bosco's well positioned with the shotgun, but doesn't want to expose himself too much. Acid is gonna pick up the kill. It's all down to Rampy in this situation. It's one versus two. The diffuser is down. My man, who has been on a storm, is holding a very tight angle. The pre-fire comes out from Rampy. He puts some good shots in, but it is not quite enough. He's in a horrible crossfire here, and if he gets one, he's not gonna get the other. My man gets the kill onto Rampy at all are going to take Oregon. So we are going to indeed go to our decider. This is going to be a very intense series so far. Orglus do take Oregon in a very hard fought victory coming out from them. They take the map 8 to 6. What an insane series so far and what a match befitting. As you said, it's uh, it's standard. It's, it's just befitting of, you know, the, the stage that we're on. You can see there, Rampy 19 kills but uh, ultimately wasn't quite enough as the uh, as the kills over on the Orglis side are uh, as equally as, as impressive. Um, but that is going to lead us in one map apiece.